Now that we understand that healthcare is a socio-technical system and encompass aspects of both social and technical processes in order to function, we're going to take a look at accident models and where those errors can occur and lead us ultimately to make an error. Accident models are typically used in human factors and in accident investigation. And sometimes we try and use these in investigating seriously untoward incidents in the NHS. But in my experience, typically the blame is placed on the individual rather than the processes that occur to cause that error. And in this presentation, we're going to take a look at accident models and where these errors can occur in a little bit more detail. Accident models have actually been around for some time. And they're based off the systems theory that we've just talked about in that errors can occur in the social context, but also in the technical systems and processes leading to the overall function of the system. They came about when they started to investigate things like the Chernobyl disaster, things like the King's Cross Metro fire, and things like the Exxon oil spillage as well, and also the Challenger shuttle explosion. And in each of these investigations, they found something called active errors and latent errors. And we'll look at these in a little bit more detail in the next bits. When an error occurs, it can be classified as active or latent. And this relates directly to systems theory that we just talked about. First, active errors are typically caused by operators acting within the social system. And remember, this system was the interaction of people and groups, colleagues and patients. So an active error would involve these systems and these colleagues actually physically making the error, even a cognitive error or a procedural error. The next one, latent errors, is caused by the system. And this is typically within this technical system. We can classify these in healthcare as things like scans not being available, results not being available, or procedures or services not being available. And these cause latent errors. If we look at these in a little bit more detail, we can also classify these latent errors as resulting to organisational, in that they can be understaffed or a burnt out workforce that leads to cognitive error and a mistake happening. We can also classify these as supervisory, in that we can encounter rule bending, lack of training, or unsafe procedures, or in that people aren't being supervised to the appropriate level, which then causes an error. And this is a failure within the system to counteract this, and this is a latent failure. Finally, within the workplace, I'm sure you're all aware, that we can get distractions, noise, and just the general design or ergonomics of the environment don't enable us to work as we should, and these can cause latent errors. In the design of systems, we obviously try and avoid errors as much as possible, and we place systems in place to try and stop that happening. These can be classified as even administrative or technical, and the idea is that they place constraints and they hinder an individual from committing an active failure. But also what they can do is they can contain the effects of an active failure. So if we think about when we discharge a patient from hospital, we typically have to send their medication list down to the pharmacy in order to get the medications before we discharge them. This is an example of an administrative and a technical constraint that's placed on us before discharging a patient. The administrative is that we have to complete the drug card and send it down to pharmacy to be second checked. And the technical constraint that happens is that you're having a second person checking the medication as well. We can liken this to the administration of controlled drugs as well, where it's administrative because we check the drug card and then we also check the CDs out of the drug cupboard. And we also fill in a book for an audit trail. This is an example of an administrative constraint. It's also a technical constraint as well within this, in that two people are checking as well. And the idea is that this hinders the individual from making an error, but also it contains the effect of an active error as well. That if an error was to occur, hopefully the second person would pick up on that and challenge and correct the error. And therefore it contains the effect of it. We can see many of these things in clinical practice as well. And this is one way that healthcare tries to avoid errors occurring and the safety procedure usually is administrative and technical and sometimes requires two people to make a decision or an intervention. So let's take a look at a typical error in the form of an extra trajectory. Typically we have an event that occurs first of all and this event could be anything ranging from a prescription error to a referral error or to a person requesting a wrong investigation or acting on the blood results that are not a patient. An event will occur and typically what we have after that is a latent failure. And remember that these latent failures are inbuilt into the system and that we can't actually do anything about. So this could well be the patient that you see that the clinic letter isn't available because the system is not working or it hasn't been uploaded or it hasn't been brought over from the other hospital or other department that you need. And this is a latent failure within the system. What happens is generally there's a multiple latent failures, tiny little processes that go wrong. And this leads us then to make an active failure. And this is the failure, remember, of the individual. 
that is a result of these latent failures. And in my experience, it's often the other way around in clinical practice when we actually investigate incidents. We place all the emphasis on the person making the mistake rather than the processes, the latent failures that have occurred in order to make that mistake happen and make it possible for that person to make that mistake. There are, of course, safety barriers like we talked about. And these safety barriers are designed to try and catch these mistakes through either administrative or technical constraints. But of course, sometimes they don't work and, and they're broken through. And it's at that point when we get an error. 